Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World. Today I'd like to give you five tips for beginning players of Galactic Civilizations 3. So uh, Galactic Civilizations 3 is a really great uh, 4x game, uh, but it's a bit different from uh, Galsiv 2, even though it has a lot of in common as well. Um, but it can be kind of overwhelming for a new player. Um, the tutorial is, I think it's worth doing for a new player, it, it teaches you some things, but it definitely is not all encompassing, like there's a lot of stuff that I don't explain to you that might not be in, uh, immediately apparent. So these are five tips for beginning players, you might already know these, uh, these are, are fairly basic, I'll be making another video on a bit more advanced things that you might also already know, I don't know, that's <laughs> depending on your level, uh, but I hope that these five tips will um, uh, will help you. So here we go. And for number one, adjacency bonuses. Unlike uh, Galactic Civilizations 2, here it actually matters where on a planet uh, you build stuff. Uh, in uh, Galsif 2 it also mattered a little bit if you had a tile that gave a certain bonus. But here um, there's actually adjacency bonuses. Uh, so when you click on or hover over a building, you can see on the bottom that it gives a bonus to the level of research to adjacent improvements. For example, here I have a technological capital, and that goes up a level because um, of this research center. This research extractor also gives plus one level to research, so if I click on this, the technological capital, you can see it's level two, and that it gives plus three levels to this one and plus three levels to this one. So what does level two do? Well, you can see that in the middle there, it says uh, research plus 10% and influence growth plus 10%. Um, so that means that for every level you get 5% extra for these. Um, this is not the same for each building. For example, this one here is level 6 and it only gets a, uh, a bonus to research. Uh, so it gets 5% per level because it gets um, plus 1 from this one, plus 3 from that one and plus 2 from that one makes for 6 in total. So it gets 5% for research. While here this technological capital also gives uh, influence growth. Um, so these adjacency bonuses are really uh, important and it's really really nice if you can kind of make a hub. So if uh, this square here, this square here, this square here uh, was available for me to build on, I could really make a nice hub. I could put like a really good um, building in the middle, for example here this one that gives a plus two to everything, or here this technological capital that gives a plus three to research if I really want to make a, a research hub. I could put that in the middle, put a lot of research stuff around it, and you really get a humongous bonus to your research. Uh, and in the end it really really matters um, uh, that you use it well. Like you, you, you do get a, a very significant bonus from it. So that's the adjacency bonus. Number two is the research screen. So here I'm at, uh, at the research screen and it might be a little bit confusing about what all the options are. Like first of all you've got a lot of things to research. Uh, it's not always clear on what everything means. Uh, I'll go into that uh, detail a bit later. Um, but it's it's especially hard to find out where where do you stand in, in research. Like where did you specialize on. Like it, it's really hard to see basically in the grand scheme of things where you are. And there's actually a small button um, here, tech tree, uh, which took me a while to find. So if you click on it, then you actually see the actual tree. So you can see the ones that are filled in are the ones I already have. And then you can click on here. So um, you can't zoom out, unfortunately. Maybe they'll implement that at some point. And you can see all the text they have. So with this one you can only see what the next one is. It says lead to economic focus, right? Um, however, when you click on tech tree, you can really see where everything leads to. So let's say I really want to have stellar immigration for some reason. How do I get there? Well, then I would have to have cultural focus, cultural outreach, cultural optimization and cultural influence. So that's the way to get there. So this can really help uh, once you know what the different research things do, um, or you can just hover over them and read them all, uh, then you can really choose uh, which direction you want to go in research. So this uh, tech tree is quite handy, uh, it's a bit hidden, but uh, now you know where it is. Number three is ship range. So if you click on uh, a fleet of yours, for example this one here, you can see a dotted line uh, here, a striped line. And that's basically the ship range. How far can it fly? If I want to send it out of the 
dotted line, it says uh, the destination is outside the fleet's range. So how does that work? Well, if you click on your fleet, uh, you can see here uh, from the different uh, ships, they all have a ship range. And this range depends or basically tells you how far away from your own civilization you can be. For example, I've got a, um, a planet here uh, called Beachhead and that uh, allows this ship to travel a certain amount of distance from this planet. So it all overlaps in a sense, right? So um, here you can see <laughs> how it goes here. Here's a little outcrop where I can't reach. Uh, you can extend this reach in several ways. First of all, well, you can colonize a planet. Uh, for example, when I took over this planet here, Horizon, uh, I got all this extra range for my ships to fly to because it doesn't matter which planet they're close to as long as they're close to a planet. Second of all, you can extend it by building a base. For example, here I've got a constructor and let's say I want to have this research relic here. Um, I can build it. So remember that the line is here now. I can build the star base. And now the line is here. So using the star base, uh, I basically get another hub from which I can uh, I can fly away with. So um, that's one way to increase your range. Another way is through technology. For example, um, using life support uh, optimization, uh, your ships get plus 10% range. Um, you also have uh, different um, little things you can build on top of your ship in the ship constructor that in increase the range as well. Um, so Using these things together, you can make your ships basically fly all over the universe, which might not be the, the most useful thing, uh, but at least that's how you can increase your uh, your ship range. And for number four, logistics. So I've got two fleets here, uh, the Terran fleet and this Terran fleet, um, and I would like to merge them. So if I click on it, it doesn't work. There's actually two fleets here. Um, if I click on one and it it says here stack ships 2 and you can click on manage and you can see that there is a fleet of 6 uh, six ships and a fleet of 7 ships. So why don't they merge with each other? Well, that's because of a thing called logistics. So as you can see here, um, the logistics are 25 out of 35. And logistics is basically uh, a cost that every ship pays. So if you hover over, you can see there uh, that this ship costs uh, three logistics, this one costs five logistics, this one costs two, and you all add this together for a number, 25. Um, you can increase your logistics through, for example, technologies. Um, for example, here, fleet logistics give me logistics plus 10. That means that instead of a 35 logistics cap, I'd have a 45 logistics cap. Um, so if I want this to fit in there, I will either need more logistics or I need to break this up. For example, now I have 25, point, uh, 25 out of 35, so I should be able to, for example, this one cost 1, uh, with uh, control you can ha click on other ones as well. Uh, this one costs 1, this one costs 1, plus 5 is 7, 8, 9, and I can eject these to make a new fleet. So now there's two fleets here, uh, one of one ship and one of five ships. Um, and now this one I should be able to merge. But that's not the case. Now this one is actually 25.5, so there is some rounding going on. So if I kick out one of these ships, of one, go back. Then in Manage, I should be able to control click both of these and say Create Fleet. Because then the logistics required is 34 out of 35. There we go. So now we have a fleet of 11 ships that can all attack together. So that's how logistics work. You can upgrade it uh, through your technology and um, it basically allows you to get bigger fleets to, to basically overwhelm the enemy with. So. That's how logistics work. Number five is the icons of research. Uh, so this can be a bit confusing, like what does everything mean here on the research screen? Um, so I thought I'd explain it. Um, when you click on any kind of improvement, technology improvement, here this little blue little star thing 
Um, that's actually a new building you get. So those are buildings you can start building on your colonies. Um, then there is the blue kind of like a drill thing. Um, that's an orbital uh, module. That's actually something you can put on a starbase. Um, for example, here this this starbase that is now mining these two resources. Um, they can have different modules, and this one has a mining ring. Um, and with this technology, you can build. Uh, instead of orbital institute so if you put this one close to your world this starbase and you put make it into an orbital institute then you get more research uh, of nearby worlds so that's what the blue icon means then well the yellow thing basically just means uh, these stack boxes uh, means just a new research that you're going through right so this that lead to neurolinking and then we can go to uh, where are we uh, I'm confused colonization ah here neurolinking there we go so that's basically what those boxes mean you go to a box called neurolinking um, so that's very easy um, then uh, let's see so we've had the blue star and the blue drill uh, if you see the three stars that basically means that you get a choice out of three technologies and they all do something um, as you can see here uh, this one, give the hammer here, means that you get uh, more um, manufacturing. This one, again, has something to do with manufacturing, and this one gives you less maintenance. But why do you get that? Well, that's because of this green cross here. And green crosses uh, basically mean a global bonus. So if I uh, click here on Xenobiology, I get growth plus 10%, and that uh, works for all... Of my colonies automatically without building any buildings so the green cross just means like a global bonus to uh, uh, to whatever it says you get something for um, then there's only the military stuff left this orange thing here means basically that you get a um, new module so this one means I get a railgun that I can put on my ships uh, and that will uh, well Give me a railgun on the ships so that's very nice um, most of the uh, military stuff gives you new weapons or shields or armors as you can see you so you can really upgrade the ships however you want um, and i think uh, that was it regarding icons yeah so now you know what the icons mean and uh, i hope it helps you getting through the research tree a bit because it can be a bit overwhelming um, so yeah, these were the five uh, tips for beginning players. I hope you found them useful. I'll be making uh, another video with slightly more advanced tips. Uh, so I hope you found it useful and see you next time.